Oh my gosh, the greatest rock band in the entire world is in the what? house in Los Angeles in the Sirius XM studios. It's Tenacious D! Yeah! Oh my gosh, Jack, Kyle, can't believe you're here. Can't believe I'm here sitting in front of two legends <laughs> and getting to do this interview. Honestly, I really never thought this day would come, so I feel honored. Wow. Oh my God. Well, Thank you know, you. it's not uh, it's not certain that anything is real. This might all be a simulation. This is a Truman all Show. All the latest ta- and, uh, scientists say that uh, it's mm. possible that we're living in a big video game <laughs> well, created if it by is. aliens <laughs> in the year of fifteen thousand BC. Oh, no. If it is, it's the greatest video game of all time. Wow. Easy, right? The graphics are amazing. <laughs> you look so real. <laughs> it's like 10K. <laughs> okay, I, I love this. I'm really excited that you guys are going to be performing for us, but I also want to talk about your performance at Louder Than Life Festival a couple weeks ago oh, in Louisville, Kentucky. First off, I got to clear up this rumor that's been going around. Did you guys bar hop the night before Louder Than Life what? on Lime Scooters? Oh, that did happen. <laughs> well, some of us. I, I texted I the whole band. Kyle didn't come, but oh. we went for a little bowling, and that's where the drinking started. And then we jumped on some lime scooters, which is kind of irresponsible. I don't think you're supposed to have an alcoholic beverage and then jump on a lime. <laughs> but they don't breathalyze you. So there we were, riding through the night, through the streets of... Where were we? Louisville. Louisville, Kentucky. Yes. <laughs> and we, we hit a, 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 a bar called, gosh dang it, I wish I could remember it. It was a good, it was called the oh, the horse they rode in on, the old horse, <laughs> something like that. That ain't it. And there was an Should open mic there, and I didn't go up there. I was offered a spot. They were like, you want to go up and do, nope. <laughs> we watched some stand up, and then we tried to get back on our limes, and the and the limes wouldn't work. I think, like, they know there's drunken people. After 11 p.m., they're like, no, no limes. Not a good so, idea. Yeah, we, there's uh, a lime cutoff? Home. There's a lime. There was a lime cutoff. Or Man. other drunk people just took them and went somewhere else. No, there the limes go. were there. I just couldn't activate it. <laughs> oh. I don't know what was going on. They, but they were doing. right. They well, were right not to let us lime. At least you got one <laughs> ride in, right? It's true. No, but I, that is so cool. So did were a lot of people coming up to you, Jack, when you were when you were doing this? I got a couple. A uh, couple people recognize. Yeah. A lot of um, people always come up to Jack. <laughs> uh, there was one dude who actually did a, a stand-up comedy set. Can't remember his name, but he was pretty funny. But then I thought one joke was aimed at me. He was like, "Uh oh, I just always get dressed the way I want to be found dead, just in case I die. I want to be dressed, <laughs> and like I don't want to be like one of these old guys with like weird, colorful shorts looking like a <laughs> jackass. I want to be dressed classy, like I am right now. I knew he was talking about me because yeah. I was, was wearing weird. colorful shorts and I was looking like a jackass, but." <laughs> This is how I want to be found dead. <laughs> so if you're listening, comedy guy that I don't remember your name, uh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> but I did put him on the list for the Louder Than Live show. Oh, hell so. yeah. But you, did you see him there? No, oh God. He was one of the millions. <laughs> one of the many millions in Louisville, in Kentucky. I mean, I love the swag. So Thank you. I, I love that you just roll in here. Doing well, your thing. I appreciate and, you. I love yeah. your swag as well. Oh, Feelings man. mute. I, I wore my Ozzy Osbourne shirt today. I felt oh, it was yeah. fitting. You know, sure. yeah, I felt I like, like it fit the vibe here. Well, you know that we uh, we are uh, uh, we formed an alliance with uh, Ozzy Osbourne. He gave us a, a listening, a pre-listening to his latest record. And, Jealous. Uh, weirdly, he sent over the record and he sent over a forty-foot inflatable Ozzy. Mm-hmm. For us to 40, look at forty foot, yeah. In while we listened him to it, coming. and we were like, we yeah. can't fit this in the backyard. We got to go somewhere, and we went to Griffith Park. Yeah, and we blew that thing up, and uh, and listened to his record, which is actually really ripping. It's pretty good. Pretty Patient number nine, good. so yeah. good, yeah. man. Good. And so many people. I never yeah. thought I would see Eric Clapton Great lineup. with yeah. a Aussie song. It's Pretty interesting. So good, though. I never thought I'd see Eric Clapton again after the cancellation. <laughs> but uh, there he after was. The Van Morrison up. I don't know. I love that. But I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need to see a photo of this Ozzy blow up. If you guys I have think one, it's later. on our Insta. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. it's yeah. up there. It's, it's up there. It. It's we there. Hide it. That's pretty smart, though, because you know that's a photo op. You have to take uh, your picture in front that's of the That's Sharon Definitely. Osbourne, man. She's always thinking. She's two steps ahead She's, of the game. Yeah, yeah. She's a smarty. Or at least before the cancellation. <laughs> Now she's in England. 
<laughs> yes, right. Okay, but Louder Than Life as well. Amy Lee, Evanescence, got yeah. on stage to perform Lee with you guys. Was this planned out? How did this come about? Did you guys like see her at the festival and were like, hey, Amy, you should come on stage with us? How did it happen? Well, she came to see one of our shows uh, many moons ago and came backstage and uh, we met and we knew there was uh, there was a nice uh, rainbow connection there. And then I don't remember how did that how did it happen? It happened. She uh, she posted on her Instagram. She was like, "I'm playing louder than oh. life." Oh my god! Uh, listen to this lineup. You got Nine Inch Nails, Zubity Boobity from the Twelfth Planet of Mars, <laughs> and me. Love those guys. We gotta we gotta do a collab. Tenacious D's gonna be there. Come on, Tenacious D. If you're listening to my Insta, let's do a collab. And oh wait, she covered Kyle quit the band. I think uh, just acoustic. And threw that on. That's so sick. So and we were like, like oh, yeah, well, of course we're yeah. going to collab with yeah. you. Yeah, it was and unbelievable. Kyle, Kyle knows her and and uh, reached out to her and said, let's do this. And uh, so she came over to our uh, dressing room area Tent. before the show. <laughs> and we did a little, a little dressing room rehearsal because we didn't have time for a sound check or anything. And she's such a pro. And she was like, hey, I have a yeah. couple ideas. I want to do a three-part harmony on Kyle Quit the Band. And we're like, oh my god, okay, uh, yeah. And we worked out a little comedy right. bit, so she would come out like, because I was too emotional, <laughs> uh, I needed someone to help. So we had called out Amy Lee to come and sing the next song, and and then she said, you know, what would be funny is if at the end of the bit you chase me around like a psycho stalker, <laughs> and I run off stage to escape you. And it was a great idea, you know. She's uh, she's actually really funny, you know, as well as one of the great vocalists, and. Uh, Sure enough, it was like the thing that people talked yeah. about. Yeah. We had one of our most <laughs> yeah. rocking shows, yeah. but it was nobody great. cared. No, yeah. that no. was not the story. Tenacious D rocks that harder was, than ever. That was the headline. <laughs> because it's always about the special thing that never yeah. happens. Like, yeah. oh my God, Tenacious D and Evanescence. <laughs> <laughs> it was already a big deal that you guys were there, and I actually missed out watching another band that was playing during you guys because I was like, what? obviously, I'm not gonna miss Tenacious Which D. Which band did you, you see missed the Seventh us? Veil? No, no, of the no. I watched you guys. Elgernon? No, no. I'm saying I missed the other band and came <laughs> oh, and watched you guys because yeah. they were playing at the same time. Yeah. Which I think I, I know who I you're hate. talking about. Well, we were headlining the poop <laughs> they stage. They shall remain <laughs> nameless. <laughs> hey, it was like such a fun performance, and I'd never seen you guys before, so I was like so ready for it. It was such a great time. But did you guys get to watch anybody at the festival, or did you guys come in and out? Did your performance? I think uh, didn't we watch a little? Who was it? Not Romstein, but I didn't watch anybody. I'm always too nervous. I'm backstage <laughs> getting ready, doing my yoga, drinking my yeah. teas. Uh, I heard about your warm up routine because of uh, thanks to who was it Diplo who posted a video a oh, video yeah. of you just prancing around backstage. I do some things. Yeah, I yeah. get my wiggles out, but. Uh, I, there were some bands I wanted to see. Uh, I wanted to see Evanescence because we were going to collab with her, but it was like, no, nah, it's too close to our showtime. Mm -hmm. I got to be focusing up. I wanted to see Horror. They're mm -hmm. rad. Uh, cool, punk rock fan band. of Horror. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no, didn't didn't see anybody. Well, I, I wanted to stay and watch Nine Inch Nails, but then I was like, no. I'd rather beat the traffic and just get back to that, <laughs> that sweet, so sweet room when you get a little old. Yeah. Oh. The nice, the nice soft early. bed. Yeah. <laughs> and the bummer was we got back to the hoe and room service was over. Right. And I ended up just ordering a Subway sandwich <laughs> while Nine Wait. Inch Nails was just like a crush. What is it. your Subway order? I must oh, know. Yeah, I go tuna foot long and I go, none of those things. I don't need the mayo and the mustard. Mm. All I need is that. Red wine vinegar. Mm. Oh my God. I'm what? looking at my husband right now because he knows this is my order. Is that what? the exact order? <laughs> I put, okay, so I will put spinach on it just to give it a little leafy oh, green. Yeah, but I do the foot long tuna yeah. and I put the red wine vinegar on it. Do you leave wow. Them, wow. I like them Air peppers. high five. I leave Man. them peppers on there. <laughs> the green peppers and cucumbers sometimes. If sometimes they sometimes have the saucy. pickles, I will do that. But oftentimes that's not that's... available on the uh, You're right. Instacart or You're whatever right. that is that we use. Wow. We're like twins. Katie? Oh my God! Me and Jack Black are twinsies at Subway. Yeah. <laughs> this is amazing. And you know, here's another thing I do. <laughs> I know where we're going. Uh, after. I'll get those chips, those like jalapeno potato chips, oh, and I'll no. stuff them oh in my, my Subway. That's I mean, it. you're doing a dance because you over. I, I, once again, that's, that's what it. you do too. Mic drop. I put the Miss Vicky's jalapeno chips on that, the sandwich. That's what oh, we're talking yeah. about. <laughs> I'm like losing this my mind really right now. This is amazing. And Kyle's like, I don't like Subway. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'd probably get the club or something. I really love that. But I feel like we could talk for literally hours. So I want to get into yes. why you're here. You guys did some, uh, I, apparently you've been working on this for quite some time. Like 20 years or something crazy. What? Tell us a little bit about this. The Who. You brought in the Who and you are doing a medley. We're doing, uh, we're going to do the Beatles actually. We're going to do the Beatles. We got a we got a few songs we want to oh, rock okay. for you. Um, but yeah, we, we did work for 20 years on, we've been playing the Who medley for 20 years. We've also been playing the Beatles medley for 20 years. <laughs> we brought out some old chestnuts. Listen, we don't like to learn We dusted songs. them off because during pandemic times, we were like, we should do a covers album. And those were like the two that we'd like honed the most yeah. over the decades yeah. of time. It's one of the advantages of being old fucks is that you've got some <laughs> shit that you've been working on for eons. And so it's like, I, don't, I hate to say it, but it's like better than the Beatles did it. Wow. Ooh. Wow. I can, or I Man. can, yeah, I can say right now, I prefer um, Tenacious D doing the Beatles than the Beatles doing yeah. the Beatles. But oh, as to the why are it. we here, <laughs> you're saying, why are we here to do it? And that's a great question. <laughs> well, <laughs> Kyle, why are we here? <laughs> Michelle said that uh... our manager's <laughs> name is Michelle. Just so you know, Kyle just says Michelle. She said no great things. We could do great things. Well, you guys have a vinyl coming out with it, and all the proceeds are mm -hmm. going to a particular oh, that. Th True charity that. for yep. the the gun laws. Right? That's why, are we doing why we're because here. We that's, care. Katie. that's why because you're here. We care. <laughs> Gosh. Did well, we I just said it, so I guess it? we... All right. <laughs> That's why we've Thank got God Michelle. She reminds us why we're here. We but never... you, you guys are just here because you love Sirius XM. You love Octane. You love all this hard rock and the Correct. new hard rock. Am I right? Classic Correct. Final. Correct. I oh, my I God. I can't believe the plug. The shameless plug. <laughs> what are we on? Octane. Yes. Hi, Octane. Octane. Yes. yes. It's that huge thing right behind uh, you saying Octane. Yes, that is it. But, um, yes, moving on to a couple questions that I have that I'm sure yes. you guys get all of the time can we ever ever expect maybe a, a sequel, sequel of some sort to the pick of destiny or school of rock yep both of them <laughs> breaking news mm -hmm. we're thinking about doing both of those it's a hybrid yeah. the school of d well I, I wanted to ask that because when both of those films came out it was before instagram it was before all this social media crap that's true really and you influenced so many not only kids who mm. thought they couldn't be musicians and then were like well i can do it now because this movie is like you know teaching me the ways and saying that i can be a kid and maybe people will make fun of me if i'm not good at it but you keep working for it and you'll eventually just get to where you want to be so it was really influential not for only children but people of all ages mm. it's just it's iconic both of them thank you I that love it. a lot. And yeah, we... We inspired shaped young minds. We, uh, we strive to inspire. But we also, we also sometimes, we discourage. <laughs> if we feel like... How do we discourage? You tried, and we've seen what you've done, and we don't think you rock. That's you true. should stop rocking. <laughs> Not we everyone. We do both. We do both. We, we build them up, rock. and we tear them down. Yeah. But thank you for noticing the, the good parts. I will only ever look at the good parts, but all of them are good parts. Really. Come on. Come on. You haven't seen all of it then, because there's definitely some bad I mean, parts. No, the bad parts are the good parts. Thank does you. that make sense? It yeah. does make sense. Like, yeah. <laughs> the raunchiness, the raunchiness in Pick of Destiny, it's like, it's iconic. You know what I was thinking? Uh, there's some, some, uh, some great comedies that we've been inspired by over the years, but the funniest comedies by far were not meant to be comedies. It's those horrible, horrible movies like The Room. Nothing's funnier than the room, what? you know. Well, the bad parts, like you say, are sometimes the best parts, and uh, a lot of like our best stuff comes from mm -hmm. horrible mistakes. And you got to be able to be open to your own badness to really capture the magic. That's where the genius lies. I like in that. the fuck ups. Like I'm watching a television show right now called La Brea, mm -hmm. and it's just preposterous and terrible. But I can't not stop watching it. The Brea? <laughs> yeah. Is it based on La Brea tar pits? Yeah. Yeah. They, they, a big oh, uh, hole right. opens up and they all fall into oh my God. prehistoric times. It's cool. kind of like uh, Land, Land of, of the Lost. Lost. <laughs> it is. It's kind of. I was going to say, it sounds like just, Land of the Lost. And there's no irony at all in it. They're all just playing it straight up for reals. It's all happening. I love it. And uh, yeah. I feel like a good way to maybe 
end the interview is asking uh-huh. who you guys are listening to right now. Wow. Great question. When you get when in your gotta... vehicle and you put on music, what's the first song that you're putting on Go. right now? Uh, man, I just let the radio do the work for me. Just... The radio? Yeah. Just <laughs> um, my boys play me some you. good music. I've been listening to to whatever my kids are listening to when I take them to school every morning. Uh, but oftentimes they won't let me listen to what they're listening to. Wow. But the last time they let me listen, uh, we, they were rocking some death grips. And I was like, dang, those guys are good. And uh, okay, my boy. Wait. That's great. How old are they? 14 and 16. <clears throat> Hell yeah. And uh, my youngest boy, Tommy, is uh, playing a lot of drums and he's really into death metal. And he likes this guy, Streeborg. So sometimes we'll, we'll listen to Streeborg. It's like there's a movement of of rockers that just play by themselves. They play all their instruments, and it's the darkest, like uh, murkiest Norwegian rock from the death depths metal? of their souls. Yeah, it's kind of scary. I'm like, what have I created? <laughs> it's well, way I mean, darker and harder than I've ever been. <laughs> now they just got to put on Meshuggah and they'll See? be like, yes, yes, yeah, so good. Go darker. darker you you could have watched them at Louder Than Life, but it's true. Uh, you were um, too busy eating your subway. Yeah. <laughs> You're tuna foot long. Getting prepared. <laughs> I, okay, actually, I have one qu- question to riff off of your children. Mm. So I've always wondered because so many of these musicians and actors have children. Do they look at you and they're like? Oh, Dad, come on, you're embarrassing me. Or are they like, wow, Dad, you're so cool. You rock out. Like, how do they react to everything that you do? Uh, the embarrassing one. No, <laughs> they want they want nothing to do with me. And uh, whenever we go out, they want me to stay far, far away. <sighs> and part of that is because teenagers think their parents are lame, no matter who their parents are. Mm-hmm. And part of it is because uh, I'm famous, and they don't like being the sons of famous people. Uh, dad so it's kind of a bummer but i i don't blame him it's kind of sucks sometimes i hate to i don't i didn't want to complain about being famous but there are some drawbacks <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i love I don't it know what are you gonna do i I'm love it well guys thank you so much for being here at the serious xm oh, studios wow. yeah, honestly this is like one for the books for me i'm gonna like cherish this moment for the rest of my life